Don't forget to check out and grab your copy of our two newly released books, Football, A Love Story, and What Did Football Teach Me? These books feature over 100 stories from current and former coaches, players, executives, and entertainers from across the football landscape describing what got them involved in a game, what they love about it, and what life lessons the game taught them. You can find your copy or order your copy from our website at footballgameplan.com slash books. Welcome to footballgameplan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bringing you our 2015 Royal Purple Las Vegas Bowl between the BYU Cougars and the Utah Utes. And let's start this video off by taking a look at my keys to victory. Starting with BYU in this ball game, I think defensively it's about making Travis Wilson, the quarterback of Utah, beat you throwing the football. If they can stop the ground game of Utah and force Travis Wilson to make plays consistently from the pocket, I think that's a win for BYU. And the offense has to be able to sustain drives. They do a great job in putting points up on the board, but at times they struggle to maintain those drives, and if they can't do that versus a very tough Utah defense, they could struggle in this ball game. And this offensive line can't have an off day. They're facing probably one of the toughest front sevens in college football in the Utah Utes. They do a great job in getting off blocks and causing all kinds of disruption in the backfield. So this offensive line of the Cougars, they have to bring their A game in this matchup against the Utes. And for Utah in this ball game, winning in space on both sides of the ball will be key. Can those receivers make one miss and take it to the house? Can those running backs get outside and break off a linebacker or two? And on defense, can those guys in space, those alley defenders, your outside backers, and your safeties, can they make plays one-on-one -on -one versus the big physical receivers of BYU? And linebacker Gianni Paul getting loose is going to be huge in this ball game. 12 and a half TFLs, they find ways to get him involved in the running game and also in the passing game. If he can have a big day, this Utah Utes defense will have a big day as a whole. And they have to play more of the power game, I think, versus BYU. You don't want to get into a situation where you're trying to throw the football more often than you want to. Play your game, try to run downhill, trying to own the time of possession and the line of scrimmage. I think that's a way they can have a lot of success in this ball game versus the Cougars. There's no love lost here. And the matchup that we're going to be looking for is this quarterback and receiving core for BYU versus the defensive backfield for Utah. We're looking at two guys that stand at 6'5 and over. Nick Kurtz, the junior wide receiver, 6'5. Mitch Matthews, 6'6. Both of them top receivers for Tanner, for Tanner Mangum. The freshman who's played fantastic but has been overlooked most of this season versus this Utah defense that has five people with three or more interceptions, including senior linebacker Gianni Paul, who I believe is on his way to the NFL very shortly. The best defensive back they have, Marcus Williams, at six foot, he'll probably be the guy on the outside looking to try to contain these big trees. But in the end, it's going to be, can BYU get the ball over the top of this Utah defense and exploit them with their big wide receivers in the red zone. I think it's going to be very interesting. I almost think this is a coin flip game, but if you had to hold me down, I'm going to go with Utah to get the job done. Uh, and just looking at BYU, my X factor for BYU is going to be quarterback Taylor Magnum. He came in the first game of the year, had the Hail Mary against Nebraska, and he, the guy's got 21 touchdowns, over 3,000 yards passing. So he, he's going to be the X factor, along with the primary target that he has in Mitch Matthews, who has 11 TDs on the season. So that's going to be the way that they'll be able to score most of their points. Matthews and uh, Magnum, the m and that's going to be the X factor for BYU. Just looking at uh, Utah, Devontae Booker was hurt, so he's he's been gone for for quite some time now. Um, looking at what they need to do as far as the defense is concerned, they need to obviously defend that passing attack of BYU. So my X factor is going to be Marcus Williams, a sophomore safety. He's got five interceptions, nine pass breakups. He's going to need to really bring it in, in the game against BYU if they want to be able to win it. Uh, he's going to need to step up in the pass defense. I like BYU over Utah in this game. I think that passing attack that BYU has, averaging 294 yards per game, is going to be too much for Utah, and that's why I have BYU winning this game. 
the Battle of the Mormon State, BYU and Utah in the Las Vegas Bowl. Now, there's a lot of NFL talent in this game. We're going to start with the offensive side of the ball. We're going to go with BYU. We're going to go with Mitch Matthews, wide receiver, 6'6", 215, big body. Also, his compadre, Devin Blackman, another wide receiver at 6'1", 185. And the guys that block up front, we have Riker Matthews. Uh, he's a senior offensive tackle as well. Now, on the offensive side for Utah, they did lose their best player uh, to an injury, a torn meniscus. So, not going to really talk about him too much. But you want to look out for guys like Ken Scott, the wide receiver out of Utah, and the guy who's going to be throwing the ball, Travis Wilson. Now, the thing about Wilson, he hasn't played that well this year, but at 6'7", 233, he's going to get some looks from NFL teams. The defensive side of the ball is where you have some uh, some some stuff to look at, especially in this game with Bronson, uh, Kafusi, the defensive end out of BYU, and also Remington Peck, the other defensive end out of, out of BYU. And Utah's defense definitely was stout this year. Their linebackers flew around, and none did it better than Jared Norris, the inside linebacker from Utah. Also, Gianni Paul, another linebacker, and we can't forget about Jason Whittingham, uh, outside linebacker as well. So in this particular game, Utah, who at one point in the season I had as the number one team in the country, I think they pulled this out against a game BYU team, but Utah is just too talented and takes this one. Virgil Carter was a tremendous passer for BYU from 1963 to 1966. He set six national, 19 conference, and 24 school records en route to leading the Cougars to its first ever football conference title. Mike Anderson was a two-time all-conference player after transferring from a junior college, and at the time, he had the best per-game rushing average in school history with 102.4 yards a game. In the 1997 Las Vegas Bowl, Oregon took on Air Force and the Ducks were massive underdogs to the 10-2 21st-ranked Falcons and led by quarterback Achilles Smith's play, the Ducks blew out the Falcons 41-3, finishing the season 7-5. I like BYU in this ball game. We finally get to see the Holy War this year, and it happens in the Las Vegas Bowl. And I think the Cougars and Utes will play a very tough, physical, low-scoring defensive battle. But if you have to trust a team that can throw the football to win, I think you have to side with BYU. So I think the Cougars will knock off the Utes in this ball game. And as we recap our picks, we're split down the middle of this Holy War. Tehran and I are going with BYU, while Gene and Chris are going with Utah. <laughs> 